Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Sabbath Services. The electricity is on, so we're ready to go. Sorry about that last week, but we lived through it. I hope you did. Now, we've got a lot to cover, and we're going to have a very interesting Sabbath, and I hope it's going to be very informative to you. Now, we're trying for the first time, I might mention that we advertise on a homeschooling network on a continuous basis. And homeschooling and church at home go hand in hand. And so that's a, a good combination. So they also have a, an advertising company and they do advertising and mailing. So we're going to do this. These will be mailed out to 20,000 homes. The first one is, why were you born? Okay. Now you see that cover there? The very interesting cover. Randy Vild helped make it up and I finished it off. We're advertising a free book, why were you born? From a speck of dust to a son of God. Then we have this one here, Occult Holidays or God's Holy Days Witch. Now the reason that the skeleton is there, because that represents death. And if you keep the Occult Holidays instead of God's Holy Days, you're surely going to die for it. However, you see the plaques of stone? Those are the Ten Commandments. If you keep those, and the laws of God, you will live. Then here's another one. God or no God. Very good booklet. All laid out with everything in it. So we'll see what kind of response we get. So after seeing these, and this is the first time that we're doing it, I thought about, well, why don't I do something like that in Hollister? Because surely there's got to be at least Ten more people in Hollister? Okay. I don't think it's like Sodom. There aren't ten. <laughs> they were not overrun like San Francisco. Okay. Now I got a, a, a bunch of news items to cover. So I'll go through them as quickly as I can. Forty years ago, Children were gentle with their parents. Today, parents have to be gentle with their children. Forty years ago, everyone wanted to have children. Today, many people are afraid of having children and actually killing and aborting them. Forty years ago, children respected their parents as a whole. Now, parents have to respect their children if they can. Forty years ago, marriage was easy but divorce was difficulty. Nowadays, it's difficult to get married, but divorce is very easy. As a matter of fact, both are very easy. It's called, you shack up. And all the problems ensue with it, and it always ends up in a mess. Forty years ago, we got to know all of our neighbors. Now we're all strangers in our neighborhoods. Forty years ago, people had to eat a lot because they needed the energy to work hard. Now, we're afraid to eat fatty foods for fear of cholesterol. Forty years ago, villagers were flocking to the city to find jobs. Now, the town people are fleeing from the stress to find peace. Forty years ago, everyone wanted to, to be fat to look happy. Nowadays, ev everyone diets to look healthy. Forty years ago, rich people pretended to be poor. Now poor people are pretending to be rich. <laughs> Forty years ago, only one person worked to support the whole family. Now all have to work to support one child. Forty years ago, people loved to study and read books. Now people love to update Facebook and read their WhatsApp's messages. Yes. And 40 years ago, people got humped back from working at typewriters, and now they, have, they get humped necks 
looking at their smartphones. You see them walking around. They don't even know where they're going. Okay. All right. Welcome to the 21st century. The phone is wireless. Cooking is fireless. Cars, keyless. Food, fatless. Tires, tubeless. Tools, cordless. A dress, sleeveless. Youth, jobless. Leader, shameless. Attitude, careless. Spouse, fearless. Fleeing, heartless. Education, valueless. Kids, mannerless. Government, useless. Parliament, careless. Massless, helpless. Everything is becoming less, but still our hope in God is endless. All right, now let's talk about the one earthers for just a minute. Someone sent me a picture. Here's the flat earth, and it has a firmament over it. And all around the outside edge of the earth is Antarctic ice. Now think what that would do to the climate if that were so. Because that would be 60,000 miles of ice. Okay? So, let's understand something very interesting. What is the firmament? And why do we have it? And what is it like? And what does it do? Okay. Now, the earth has a firmament over it, all the way around it, and it is a globe. It's not flat. So let's look at what we have. We have the troposphere, which runs from zero to seven miles. Then we have the stratosphere, which runs from 12 to 50 miles. Then we have the mesosphere that runs 7 to 31. Then the next one is 31 to 50 miles. The thermosphere, it runs from 50 to 450 miles. And then we have the exosphere that is you're just beyond the stratosphere of the Earth. And that runs 440 miles to 60, 6,200 miles. So, it is a firmament that encases the whole globe. Not a flat earth, like a covered dish luncheon. Some people said in the past, and I think I even heard GTA said, well, in the past, the earth was covered with, with a glass stratosphere and the, the sky was more pink. Breaking news. Fifth largest life insurance company in the United States to pay out 160% more for deaths of working people, 18 to 64, in 2021. Total claims benefits up $6 billion. Now, when are they going to announce that the Vax did it. And the Vax lover, who got everything, he told everybody to take it, take it one, two, three, and all the boosters, guess what he came down with last week? He came down with Fauci uh, <laughs> COVID. And he wore how many masks? Three? told us all of this, huh, I wonder how that happened. I wonder if God finally got fed up with his laws and said to one of the angels, all right, give it to him. <laughs> Don't know. All right, no. All the warnings about food shortages, we better all pay attention because it's going to happen. See? 
Now, the goal of the Democrats is to try and make us as much like Venezuela as they can before the 2024 election. That's their goal. Not stated, but it's obvious if you look at what is happening. Winter wheat down 7% from 2021. And remember, in southern Russia and into Ukraine, two of the largest wheat and barley producers in the world, no planting this year. And all the storage that they have in the Ukraine, Russia has not let out yet. All oranges down 11% from 2020 to 21, but down 23% from last year's final utilization. Okay? So what's going to happen to the rest of it? We'll have to wait and see. Now, you want to know why they're fighting so hard against getting, fighting the, getting rid of Roe versus Wade? Last year, in 2020, 20% of all pregnancies were aborted. Okay. So we can look at that and say, does God judge for innocent blood? Yes, he does. So all of you out there and all of you self-righteous, snobby Protestants who hate the law of God, who hate the Sabbath of God, who hate obedience to God, listen up. You and your pastors, and I'll say it again and again and again and again, are the ones who are so against God that unless you repent and you do something more than just a partial taking away of abortions, there is going to be no hope for this country. You better be all ready to be enslaved because it will happen. How soon? We don't know. But we won't find out. To show you how bad it is here in California, and I got the assembly bill passing infanticide in California. It looks like it was written by an idiot who just got clearance out of the nut house. Phrase after phrase after phrase after phrase after phrase strung together in incoherent language that it means anything to anyone who wants to do anything they want to do. So I pity California, and we live in it here. But let me tell you one thing. I just got notice from the water company, severe Water restrictions. Looks like we're going to run out of water. See. They can be everything they want to be. But God is going to humble every single one. If you don't have water, you don't live. So what they're trying to do is get the water purification good enough to recycle water. But who knows how that may work out. See? And if you don't have water, how long are you going to make it? See? So I expect this summer lots of forest fires, Roving blackouts, everything they have said. Now, it will be different in different parts of the country, but in California, that's what it's doing. Now, here's something to check out. In the United States, the U.S. government is waging psychological warfare on the nation. 
Okay. And everything becomes a weapon against you. Here's an interesting article. It's called The Overhauling of Straight America. How did they get within one and a half generations from going from non-acceptance of homosexuality to embracing same-sex marriages in so-called Christian churches? Okay. Now, one thing the world doesn't do, they don't look at it from God's point of view. See? But they use psychological things, and guess where it started first? And who do you get to accept it as a young age? Hmm? Children. And by self-admission of Disney World, they have been in the forefront of bringing this generation into Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, a little sidebar. I like basketball. Wayne likes basketball. We both like the Warriors. And we like them because they're not arrogant jerks. They work hard, or underdogs, but they are champions. They had to work hard. And the only way that you work hard is that you discipline yourself and you do what is right. Same thing. In anything that anyone attempts to do, see? So between Disneyland, Hollywood, children's programs, children's education, middle school, high school, and college, we have gone from a nation that believes in marriage and children to a nation that believes in homosexuality and infanticide. So don't expect it to get any better. Here's how they did it. I'll read the points. Talk about gays and, and gayness as loudly and as often as possible. Oh, and don't tell them that certain practices cause HIV, and monkeypox. Okay. I wonder what they're going to be struck with next. Portray gays as victims, not as aggressive challengers. But they are the aggressive challengers and not victims. Number three. Give protectors a just cause. Now. How do you do that? You use the word, you cannot discriminate. And equal rights under the law, right? So if they can get the law changed, which they have, look where it comes. Number four. Make gays look good. Okay. Number five. Make the victimizers look bad. And so that's how they've done it. And you get down to the thing, and it was, it was the one Supreme Court decision that made that possible. What two adults do in private is legal. Referring to sex acts. But is it right for two adults to sit down and plan to rob a bank? 
to blow up bridges, to kill people. Oh, well, we can't have that. Well, what do you do to the family when you approve gay marriages? You're looking at two nations which are looking at an aging population that may weaken them before they're able to come to the point of world powership that they want, and number one is China. See? Because in saying you can get rid of the women so we don't reproduce all, all children we don't want. They're so stupid they forget the people get old and die. See? And when you get old, well, Jack and I would make really good infantrymen now, wouldn't we, huh? <laughs> okay. And we'd have Steve come right behind us. Steve could be the one who'd take care of us medically because we'd need it every mile. <laughs> okay. See? So look what they've done. Now, I don't know if we have the 30-page re report of the speech that one of the Chinese pr vice premiers gave in 2003 concerning America and concerning their plans for America. I'll just summarize it. They say the Chinese were here through the native Indians before any of the white men. And if you think Hitler was a racist, you know nothing about the Chinese from China. Okay? They're absolute racist. Okay? And they've been planning to take over America by what they've been doing the last 20 years to buy our debt and take over our businesses and our banks and everything else. So when push comes to shove, we'll have to wait and see what happens. But I can tell you this, unless there's really deep repentance and return to God with Sabbath keeping and no abortion, just those two things. If that does not happen, don't think for one minute that God is going to let anyone come back in and bring the economic policies that will lead to prosperity because we don't deserve it. And we have looked to it. Let's come to Deuteronomy 8. Let's see what's happened to us here. This is a prophecy. And for all of you hard-headed Protestants out there, get out your Bible and dust off the Old Testament because there are 356 prophecies in it concerning Jesus Christ, whom you claim you worship and you trust, which you don't because you don't believe him and won't keep his commandments. Okay? Okay. Deuteronomy 8. Now, all of you Protestants out there are whining and moaning and groaning and, you know, how could they do this and how could they steal the election? Because God gave Satan permission to do it because of our sins. See? He's not sitting there just playing tiddlywinks with Jesus Christ. He's watching all nations, all people, to see what they're going to do. Okay? Now, here's Israel, which we are today. America consists of the largest number of the 12 tribes of Israel than any of the other tribes of Israel. Unfortunately, those still in Europe have always been under the thumb of the Assyrian which is Germany. 
The only relief that America has had is because they believed the Bible, but they didn't believe in the Bible. They preached Jesus Christ and the gospel, but not the true Jesus and the true gospel. But that was more than any other nation. So here's what God told them just before going into the promised land, after they had suffered 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. And think about this. Every day during that 40 years, they were burying the rebels who died because they didn't believe God. Right under the cloud and under the fire, they didn't believe God. He spoke from the top of Mount Sinai, and they heard it, and they said, Oh, don't let him speak to us. You speak to us, Moses. Okay? So he asked the questions. Let's start right here in verse 1. All the commandments which I command you this day, you shall be diligent to observe, to do, so that you may live. Now, all you Protestants out there, you say if you keep the commandments, it's a curse. It's not. The law is not the curse. The curse is breaking the law. And if you are living lawlessly, proclaiming Jesus Christ, you are more susceptible to the correction of God and the harshness of what he's going to bring against you because you despise the sacrifice of Christ. You despise the word of God. You despise what he tells us to do. And look at what the nation has come become because of you and all your minions with you. So live. And multiply and go on and possess the land which the Lord swore to your fathers. And you shall remember all the way which the Lord your God led you these 40 years in the wilderness in order to humble you. Are you ready to humble yourself or does God have to humble you personally? Huh? You have the choice. You can repent and humble yourself and come to God and really along with repenting of your sins, which are the transgressions of the laws of God, you begin to keep them and cease living in sin. Okay? To prove you. That's very interesting, isn't it? God proves every one of us. So what happened to us when Trump was here? He proved us. He blessed us. But did we acknowledge God? Did we thank him? Oh, once in a while, Trump would throw out the name of God. All of his faith commission people, they were all hard shell Sunday keepers. Okay. To prove you. Now, here's what God wants to know. Okay. Of every one of us. In order to humble you. To prove you. To know. What is in your heart. Because he gives you. The opportunity. To choose. Now if you're a hardcore Sonny keeper. You're not liking what I'm saying. If you could endure it. Long enough to get to this point. But God. Is proving every one. What was in your heart? To what? Say that Jesus did away with the law? No. Whether you would keep his commandments or not. How about every one of us? Every one of us in the church of God. How many in the church of God like to look for little loopholes so that they can supposedly do a little sin on the side and have God approve it? Hmm? 
And how about all the elders and ministers in the churches of God? Are you warning the people of their sins? Are you warning of the calamities that are coming? Are you helping them to understand what they need to do? Are you really keeping the words of God, the Sabbaths of God, the holy days of God, the way that you should? Or are you running off to Mexico for Guadalajara vacation time? Okay. Now, and he humbled you and allowed you to hunger and then fed you with manna, which you did not know, neither did your fathers know it, so that he might make you to know. Here's the whole key. Here is the whole key of what goes on all the time with God and his people and his churches and the world. In whatever degree that God looks at it. So that he might make you to know that man. Now you put your name there. Okay? Whatever your name is, because if you're a man, you have a name. If you're a woman, the last three letters of that word is man, because you came from man. The man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, out of the mouth of the Lord, does man live. Do you do that? Do you get up every day and in your prayers acknowledge God that in him you live and move and have your being? That everything that you have comes from him? That you need him in everything that you do? Do you think about God all the time every day or you do you think a little bit about God on Sabbath and come and get together and socialize with people who think about God a little bit on the Sabbath but it is not a living word in your life to live by that you pray every day you study every day you're led by the Spirit of God and God will convict you of your sins so you can repent and draw closer to him look God is preparing a people for the return of Christ. And what are we going to be? Are we going to be filled with truth? Are we going to be like a flat tire? That when it comes time to go down the road, you can't move. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. Your children did not wear out, your clothing did not wear out upon you, nor did your foot swell for 40 years. Okay? And you shall consider in your hearts that as a man chastens his son, so the Lord your God chastens you. And you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to fear him. Now think about this in relationship to the coming kingdom of God, of which all of us hope to be there, right? Okay. For the Lord your God brings you into a good land, a land of brooks of water and fountains and depths that spring out of the valleys and hills. We can phrase it for the church. God has given us his whole word, every bit of it, from Genesis to Revelation. And he's given understanding to his church that even Daniel the prophet didn't know. And even John, the apostle that Jesus loved, didn't know. Think of what that is worth. Now, in the second half, we're going to cover how fantastic that's going to be. But think about it. How much is your calling worth to you? I mean, every day. Not just when you're in trouble. Hey. Too many people wait till they're in trouble. Don't wait till you're in trouble. Come to God now. Now notice, 
a land of wheat and barley and vines, fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land in which you shall eat bread without scarceness. Those days are coming to an end now. Yes, indeed. Okay. Now we're going to read what has happened to us. We're going to read what has happened to the nation. We're going to read what has happened to the church. Okay. A land which you shall eat bread without scarceness, and you shall not lack anything in it. Now the next time you go to your supermarket before too many of the shelves are bare. Think about that you can have anything you want. You just buy it. I mean, think about that. And then think about Venezuela. And how long did it take for them to come to total poverty? Three years. We're into two already here. What's going to happen in the next year? I don't think it's going to be pleasant because there are not very many people replanting. Okay? It is a land whose stones are iron and out of whose hills you may dig copper. Now notice verse 10. And when you have eaten... That's true, right? Look at all that you have in your cupboard. Look at all that you have in your freezer. Okay? And are full. Did anybody come here hungry because they didn't have any food? Then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. Okay? So what do you do when the good times are here? You keep God the center of your life. You live his ways. You obey his voice. You keep his commandments. You thank him for every drop of water, every breath of air, every morsel of food, because it all comes from him. See? You do that before the difficult times come. See? But here's what happens. This is what happened in 2020 at the election. Yeah, you can say, oh, that was all fraud. Don't you think God knew that? Don't you think God gave Satan permission to do that? Huh? Because they're right here. Beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments. And if you're a Sunday keeper, you are a perpetual, weekly sinner against God, keeping a day which he never said to keep. And if you want to get smart aleck about it and say that Paul wrote this or Paul wrote that, ask yourself the question deep in your heart. Can any man tell God what to do to nullify any of his words or any of his commandments? Remember what Jesus said? Don't think I've come to abolish the law or the prophets, because I didn't come to abolish, but to fulfill that is to complete. And until heaven and earth shall perish, not one jot, or one tittle shall perish from the law. So the one you claim to worship said, everything you claim about him in your arrogance and false grace is a satanic lie, and you will not bend your stiff, unrepentant neck to come to God in humility with tears and asking God to help you and guide you. Okay, beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command you today. 
lest. Here's the warning. Here's where we are today, right now, and it's being taken away from us. It costs three times as much to grow an acre of wheat. And three times as much on top of that to ship it than it did a year and a half ago. What about corn? What about soy? What about the other things that we eat? Huh? Notice. Less when you have eaten, that's us, and are full. And what is full mean? You're all fat. Right? And I know I look around, I, 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 I can't believe it. It's hard to find a thin woman in Hollister. Where are they? Huh? You know? They don't need to be waddle waddles. But why are they fat? Huh? Okay. And full. And they build goodly houses. That's what they've done around here in Allister, about ready to kill the whole town of Allister and use up every drop of water and tell everybody, oh, we thought we would have enough water for to last us. Okay. And live in them. When your herds and your flocks have multiplied and your silver and gold has multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then you become haughty of heart. And that's precisely exactly what has happened with us today. Haughty of heart. And all of the religionists go and haughty in heart and claim the grace of God, reject the commandments of God, reject the truth of God, and say, you go to Christ and take what belongs to you. No one's going to go to Christ and take what belongs to them because he ain't going to give it to you. See? Come out of art and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Okay? And we've had it. Everything is multiplied. So here we are. We're at the crossroads. We have many crossroads that we've crossed in the past before. But now they get bigger and more dangerous. And the trenches alongside the road get steeper and more precipitous. And the road gets more narrow and more rugged to go on because of the sins. Okay? Now, take this and multiply it to the whole world. Because the whole world is full of gigantic mammoth problems that only God can solve. And he has called us to help solve those problems. And at the resurrection, all that are in the first resurrection are going to save the world under Jesus Christ. Is that a big enough goal for you? Is that enough incentive for you to stir yourself up so that you stay close to God? Is that enough to inspire you to humble yourself and be grateful to God? See? What is it? When you live in Sodom and Gomorrah and every rich thing you ever wanted is here, but it's being taken away. So all of us, all the churches of God, all of the elders, all of the brethren, what does your calling mean to you? And what are you going to do about it? 
And how are you going to live your life? And what is your relationship with God? So you come back the second half, and we'll find out what a grand and glorious thing it's going to be to be in the first resurrection. And what fantastic things God is going to do for everyone who will be in it. And I say all of these words that I've said today, not to castigate you or to put you down, but to help you see things the way that you need to and inspire you to come to God with a pure heart and a pure mind and looking to him to help you in everything. So let's take 20 and we'll be back. Thank you.